So I want you to check this image of um, a Nirvana t-shirt, a Nirvana t-shirt trademark image. It's the smiley face with the crooked smile, the tongue out, and the X eyes. It says Nirvana. And I want you to look at the Marc Jacobs uh, version that says, you know, MJ in the eyes. And it says heaven above in the same font type as, as similar font type as Nirvana. Now, the important thing here is that Nirvana owns a trademark on this image. Um, has been using it, you know, in commerce for a long time. They also, you know, have used it on shirts and et cetera, um, you know, various commodities um, over time, the group has. Marc Jacobs is like a high-end boutique designer, you know, designer t-shirts, $100 t-shirts, et cetera. And um, he had this, this line called the, boot, the Bootleg Redux Grunge Line, um, you know, in, this is uh, November of 2018, um, in early 2019, Nirvana files lawsuit for both copyright and trademark infringement. Now, uh, you can get the Nirvana shirt pretty much anywhere, like Target, Urban Outfitters, Forever 21, places like that. You can get it everywhere for like $10, $12. The Marc Jacobs uh, shirt was a little bit more exclusive, a little harder to get. Okay. Um, and uh, a couple months after Nirvana uh, filed a lawsuit, uh, Mark Jacobs filed uh, a dismissal and basically said that the smiley face like this is not, it's an idea, that it's not original or creative, that Nirvana's work is not original or creative at all, um, and therefore not protectable under, under copyright. And this brings up a very important question. Is a smiley face an idea or a protectable expression? Now remember, to have copyright, it has to be fixed in a medium. Does the smiley face, Nirvana smiley face, meet that? Yes. Right? Does it have to be minimally creative? Yes. Does it have to be minimally original that you associate it with that, that author, that it's, it's the, the product of an individual author? Yes. Kind of meets all those things. This could be an interesting fair use case. It's still, you know, it's, um, you know, kind of hanging out there. Not much has not much has happened uh, with it. <laughs> but if we were to look at it from a fair use perspective, okay, let's look under purpose. Is Mark Jac Jacobs use commenting on Nirvana? No. Is it exploiting our familiarity with the Nirvana image, and is it simply derivative? I'd say yes. Therefore, not fair. Okay. If we look at this under uh, nature of the original. This, you know, is the original uh, creative work, again, minimally creative, or is it a work of, of um, you know, of nonfiction? In this case, you'd probably have to give it, you know, say that the use is not fair. So we have not fair under purpose, not fair under um, nature of the original. Then we look at amount used. I mean, he uses a lot. Um, or enough, right? Again, we could maybe sit in both areas, but it's the same color, it's the same uh, style of mouth and tongue. I mean, a lot of the same font, similar font. It's very similar, um, like almost too much, especially since it's non-transformative. So likely not a fair use. Here's where maybe, maybe Marc Jacobs would have a fair use claim would be market. Does it create market harm? Hmm. Would the person who's buying a $12 t-shirt at Target be the same that's buying a $100 and $125 boutique t-shirt? Likely, no. Likely those consumers are entirely different. I'm maybe not different demographics, but yeah, different class demographics. That would be the space where maybe, maybe maybe he'd have a decent fair use claim. The market's so, just so different. Again, it's just kind of hanging out there. We don't know yet. Um, nothing's been released. They're probably just going to settle out of court. Um, but as of now, not much movement on that. All right, so y'all know this image? Obama hope image? Yeah, right? Like, yeah, you know it, right? 2008, 2012. Um, this image was done by Shepard Ferry. Uh, Shepard Ferry is a 
you know, he's from around my way. Um, he is the dude who did, uh, who does Obey. So if you see Obey, um, that's his brand. Uh, it used to be back in the day he did, uh, Andre the Giant has a, has a posse and he did stickers like that and he put them up all over Boston, Rhode Island, uh, stuff like that. And then he got sued by the WWF for violating the trademark on Andre the Giant. So he changed it to Obey and just used his, his drawing of Andre the Giant. But again, he does a lot of like layered collage, stencil stuff. And he did this image of Obama that, you know, became very iconic. And he uh, put it out there and ended up being on t-shirts, coffee mugs, keychains, everything, everything. And he claimed that, you know, all profits that he got from it, all the money that he got from it, he put into Obama's uh, campaign. Okay. A couple years after, you know, after the image was out, Obama was in office, someone in the blogosphere was like, where did this come from? Where did Shepard Ferry get this from? And did a bunch of searching on internet images and found that it came from this press conference with uh, Barack Obama, who was sitting with douchebag George Clooney. And um, there was actually a super large high res image of just Obama from, from this image. Now, um, what ended up happening was once this blogger sort of said, hey, it came from this image that was an Associated Press image, the Associated Press reached out to Shepard Ferry and sued him. He's a millionaire. He's got some big du ducats from uh, the Obey brand. And uh, he's kind of a controversial figure in the art world, which we'll talk about in a few weeks here. And, uh, you know, basically, the AP reached out to him. He said, you know, screw off. He's like, I didn't use that image. And he's like, I used a different image. And, um, you know, and then the photographer, Manny Garcia, who actually took the photograph, said, hey, AP, guess what? Like, by contract, I actually own that image. You don't, you don't own that image. So it became kind of, kind of really messy and convoluted. Um, and you can see like a bunch of images where, you know, the blogger tries to match it up and just some other, other versions of it. Uh, Shep Ferry also did a, a victory one, Obama Obey, you know, you can see all that stuff. Now, um, here's the thing. This was setting up to be an amazing fair use case. It was going to be a great fair use case because you'd have to, you, we could really look at it. But what ended up happening was Shepard Ferry perjured himself. So he did like a, a legal interview about this where he lied and he said he did not copy the image um, that he, he totally copied. Um, so he totally lied instead of saying, yes, my use, I copied that, my use is a fair use. So he perjured himself and never went to court and it you know, resulted in out-of-court settlements. But let's just do a Panam on it, right? Let's look at purpose. Is the use fair on a purpose? Is it transformative? What's the purpose of a news photograph? I mean, what is it? It's like literally, oh, here's a new, you know, dinner news conference that Obama's at with George Clooney. And it has a limited few day market. It's not an amazing iconic image of Obama, um, you know, and, but like this is a purpose transformative. Yes, it's, it's for political purposes. Um, it's an, it's an art, clear artistic differences. Um, it's building upon the original as a whole different meaning. Um, so yeah, it would likely be fair under that, right? Um, nature of the original is the original creative work. The answer is, oh, hell no. It's a picture of Obama at a press dinner, press conference, whatever. Not staged, not lit, didn't tell Obama to look this way, didn't tell him to dress a certain way. Therefore, the use would be fair. Now, amount. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. This would likely be not fair. Shepard Ferry took this huge high-res, like, crop out of just Obama for this and used it in its entirety. It would likely, likely be unfair in this factor. Hmm. So we're pretty fair so far. Next, we get to market harm. Would this create market harm? Again, what's the market for AP works? They license their work for news organizations to run their images and run their stories. News organizations pay a, a fee and they're able to uh, use AP uh, news content. Okay. Um, and have, you know, like an image like this has a short shelf life, again, of a couple days. Here's Obama at a dinner with, you know, douchebag Clooney. All right. 
this likely would have been fair. Again, the, the, the consumers are different and the purpose is so transformative that this would likely be a transformative market. So yes, this would be a fair use, but you know what happens when you're an asshole and you lie? It doesn't go to court, it doesn't get to get tested, and that's what, that's what happens. So don't lie, don't lie and cheat. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Manny Garcia says, you know, I just want Shepard Ferry to say, all right, you're the guy, thank you. He wants to get a little credit, a little props. And the interesting thing that came out of this lawsuit and one of the, you know, one of the, you know, the things that happens in a lot of like these lawsuits is like now Manny Garcia was selling original prints of the Obama image for like $1,500. The fact that we even know his name is because of this lawsuit. It's just really interesting. So it actually increased his market and market value and ability to sell, uh, sell products. So uh, last is just a little screen grab of a bunch of uh, Shepard Ferry uh, artworks that he's been critiqued for plagiarism, which we'll talk about in a couple weeks here when we talk about street art. And you can see some of, because uh, Andre the Giant has a posse, um, and then the image of, uh, with the dusk mask on and dope, which was a, a Baxter or a Austin, Texas based street artist who did some appropriations of Shep Ferry's work and Shepard Ferry sued him. So like, again, why he's one of the reasons why he's very controversial is because he's appropriated a lot of images, um, or plagiarized a lot of images that aren't necessarily fair uses and which is sort of unethical in the art world. Um, and also sued other artists, um, so like he gets kind of a you know bad rap, and he's he's you know he's in, he's an asshole. Um, but anyways, that's fair use in a nutshell. Panam, panam, panam. Don't you forget it. Just just put it there, right in your notebook. Just hold on to that, okay? I am the real Dr. Dre, aka DJ Food Stamp, out here on Goat's Beard Farm and Homestead on my tractor. I'm about to go do some stuff with the chainsaw, get it popping here, and uh, I will see you for our next class, all right? Y'all take care, keep it real, keep it 100, uh, and enjoy the sunshine. It is beautiful out here in Eugene, Oregon right now. I can't breathe, but it is beautiful. All right, take care of y'all selves. Peace.